Hi everyone, my name is Pabsi Pabalan of the World Bank Group and today I am speaking with the father of microfinance, the founder of Grameen Bank and a Nobel Peace Prize winner, one of the rock stars in development, Muhammad Yunus. I'm trying to calm myself down, but I'm really excited. So let's go. So what gave you the idea to start Grameen Bank? Well, it's a kind of jump uh, out of uh, desperation. P situation was terrible in the si at that time in Bangladesh. And I was trying to see if there's something I can do in the village next door to the university where I was teaching. And I did a lot of small things to see if it's somebody can benefit from that. And then I saw the loan sharking in the village, and it's an awful thing that's going mm -hmm. on. Then I thought, I can't solve the problem of the world, but definitely I can do something for these few people in the village. Why don't I lend the money myself? If I lend the money, people who will come to me, they don't have to go to loan sharks. Their problem is solved. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, I don't have to study it for years to understand, we just solve the problem. And I started doing that. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what it will mean to them, how eagerly they will take it, but it became very popular. Everybody wanted to come borrow from me, and I was very happy they're coming out of the loan sharks mm -hmm. uh, grip. So I kept on giving money and became very popular. Uh, and uh, then soon I was running out of money because everybody is borrowing from me. So I was trying to see if bank can lend the money. Bank said, no, mm -hmm. they cannot. So I tried to convince them. They were unconvinced. So I offered myself as a guarantor. Mm -hmm. I'll become a guarantor. I'll sign papers. Mm -hmm. You give the money. And finally, they agreed after several months. Then I started taking money from the bank with my signature and so on. And okay. it worked very well because people are paying back every penny. Mm -hmm. So we went out. And finally, I thought, why don't you create a bank for this purpose? Mm -hmm. So in 1983, we created the bank called Grameen Bank. It started in 76. In 83, we became bank and mm -hmm. kept it expanding. So you mentioned that you approached banks. What did they tell you? I mean, why, what reason did they give that they don't lend money to the poor? They simply said they're not creditworthy. They're not bankable. Mm -hmm. You cannot get your money back, and they don't have the collateral to offer. I said, why do you need collateral? Then they said, how can you give the money without collateral? I said, well, you just give them, and they, mm -hmm. as long as they give the money back, that's okay. I said, no, no, we need collateral, and the poor people have no collateral. So that way they dismissed them. This, this is not the kind of people mm -hmm. they would like to have. Well, um, another question for you. Let's imagine that I was one of Grameen Bank's clients and I uh, have a loan. Uh, but what mindset do I need for myself to succeed? Well, succeed that you take a loan to start a business. That's what you explain to the mm -hmm. bank, that this is what I'll do. And you focus on that, that I have to be successful in this and make sure that I can be, I can pay back all the money out of the income that I have, uh, make out of the investment that I did. And that's so the focus is very important and self-confidence mm -hmm. that I can do it. Because many of borrowers, uh, maybe like you, uh, never had any experience before, taking money from somebody else mm -hmm. and doing things and paying back. Uh, they never handled money in many cases because their husbands handled the money. Okay. The, for the first time, they're handling money, so they're scared to death. So have confidence, make it happen, go step by step, and then once you have been successful in getting the money back, you become very confident you did it because mm -hmm. you gone through the whole process, came out successful. That builds up tremendous amount of success. Mm -hmm. And you talked about young people being job creators instead of being job seekers. Um, I grew up thinking that's easier said than done, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. What can we do to change this kind of thinking? Because uh, you grew up in that way because that's how everybody tells you. Mm -hmm. uh, your parents tell you, your school tells you, your friends tell you you have to have a job. So you're looking for a job. Nobody tell, told you that you could be an entrepreneur. You can do things on your own way. And there was no such thing. In the school, we never discussed this. In the home, you didn't discuss it. We're all saying, what kind of company you would like to work for? What kind of, would you going to work for the government? or you want to corporate uh, institution, or you want to go for NGO activity. These are the questions right. you have to work. So I was saying this is the wrong thinking completely. I'm not going to work for anybody. <laughs> I'm going to do things on my own. So we need a kind of thinking process. We, in the school, uh, your discussion will be, who would be uh, looking for jobs? Raise hands. Mm -hmm. Who would be starting their own business? You create jobs, raise your hand. Then you discuss, well, how do you create a job? How do you create a business? And this kind of thing. Well, one last thing. So 
this watch was given to me by my sister and says, be the change. And I try to live by this as much as I can, at least I try. Um, and I'd be so honored if you could sign it, if that's OK. Yeah, I'll sign it. Yes. <laughs> I never signed a watch before. So this is the first time, first everybody. Time. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been Thanks a lot. Thank you. you.